So without further ado, I'd like to bring out uh, our guest for our one-on-one -on -one conversation. I think you all probably have seen the color orange a bit uh, when you're here over the last few days, but certainly recognize the brand, the name, and, um, and probably in your own way, uh, in some way, shape, or form, deal with this company. But I'm really excited to have Constantine come out and spend some time and talk about some of the issues facing his, co his company, how he sees and how he looks at the industry. So without further ado, Constantine Sixth. Brother? All right, so I asked him to wear the orange tie, but he didn't, he didn't want to do that today. That's not true. I had it and you said I have to take it away. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we were together on stage, is it three years, four years ago? Three years. Three years ago. And uh, a little bit has changed, right? Ground transportation marketplace disrupted. Uh, your business model for your company continues to evolve. Your role in the company certainly has grown for you and for your brother. Um, let's talk with a bit about the trends and kind of what we're seeing today. So what are the major trends you're seeing in the industry? What, what, are, what are you dealing with when you deal with customers today? What are you hearing from them? I think, first of all, the biggest change than three years ago was that when we met three years ago in Frankfurt, yes. we sponsored the big party the night before. That's right. And I remember you invite me to, invited me to do the session at, I think it was 8.30 or 9 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> so this time I feel a lot more sauber <laughs> <laughs> than last time. <laughs> we were a little bit dizzy last time, yeah? So, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I hope that I, you have a more, you know... I, I think it was a five-minute interview last time. We're going to go a little like longer hours, this. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... Well, um, the big trends, I mean, there's, uh, you can uh, talk, obviously, uh, hours uh, about that. Huh? Um, but I think the biggest trend that we face in our uh, industry um, is um, what we call end-to-end. -end, and I think many travel managers talk uh, about the same thing, um, that we believe that um, um, the world is changing, that um, people don't really talk so much anymore about a pure car rental product, a pure ride hailing product, about the leasing yep. product, about the fleet management product, that uh, customers uh, talk with us about A to B and mobility solutions. And I think uh, in the last years, people talked about that, but I think now it's really happening. And we have so many concrete uh, projects and clients where uh, we deliver mobility and not just talk about it. Huh? Right, and, and, uh, yeah, and where you're involved in, in many more parts of the whole process than you might have been in the past, right? Because it's not just a, it's not a, a vendor conversation, it's really a full, like an integration conversation in a much different way, right? Absolutely, and I think our positioning changes also. If you, uh, I think a great example is um, our ride-hailing product, um, which is currently uh, called My Driver, but we are integrating it completely in our sixth app, um, where we are not purely anymore a provider. In the past, you know, our company uh, more than 100 years ago has been founded as a limousine company uh, where we uh, provided drivers, chauffeurs. Uh, um, but um, with our new product, um, we are already an, an on-demand product um, uh, in Madrid and in London. You can already feel that today. So um, versus our competition where you pre-book limousines and whatever, uh, with our new uh, app, you can um, um, ride hail a driver and he comes in five minutes and you see him coming on the map and you know you see the picture of the driver and we have that live in Madrid and London and we are rolling that out over the course of the next year all over Germany <coughs> that will be a uh, very straightforward competitor to taxi and this will all happen in one app in the sixth app you know? and this is a partnering product where we are not purely um, the vendor of the supply chain but we are uh, more or less like an uh, intermediary um, partnering with the largest ride hailing companies right. in the world. Huh? Yeah, and, and uh, you know, personalization in terms of what the traveler wants and when they want it and how they want it is a big driver of this too, right? I mean, in terms of how, they, how th the product you're offering. Yeah, and I think that's what I also felt during the uh, last days talking to many of um, um, your guests is that more and more corporate travelers, um, they want the same kind of experience that they have as a private person. And, uh, you know, the travelers and companies, I, I think they, they just don't understand why they should have a um, <coughs> different um, product experience when they book through their corporate account versus when they book, <coughs> when they travel 
with the family right and um, talking about OBAs and all, all that kind of stuff and um, I think you call that P2C like experience yes and we are working a lot on that to give all corporate travelers exactly the same kind of experience um, that they would have you know like when they book as a private person so where does like the the what's the significance of like the the connected car where you're literally you know going getting the car opening the car with your right from your cell phone that there's really even no interaction other you know is that is that where this is all going I think that's by far the biggest trend in our industry that's the biggest game changer that can, that has the potential to change everything um, we already have equipped more than 20,000 cars uh, with telematic devices and as you know um, we have great experience with telematics because we founded Drive Now, which was the biggest car sharing company in Germany, we sold it to BMW, so we have a great experience in doing that. And why is that such a big game changer? Um, already at the biggest airports in Germany, you can now uh, go with the sixth app directly to the um, parking, <coughs> parking lot and open the car with the iPhone and just go. So you don't even have to go anymore to a counter and imagine in the future what if you know, the cars are all over. And um, if they are not just anymore at an airport, if they're on the street, um, on an app, uh, uh, the app can uh, feature you with hailing a cab, hailing a limousine, taking the car, which is five minutes from you. And then think about this world, if you imagine, and you would have to describe that to a friend of yours. Right. Uh, what kind of app is that? Is that now a rent a car company? Is that, uh, you know, so. It's, it's actually not, none of the above, really, right? It's none it's, of the above. It's uh, yeah. real true mobility that we're going to. Um, offer here and that's uh, changing there um, and I think um, if you really want to purchase mobility we are one of the only companies that really provide that I think most of the companies they have great PowerPoint presentations and talk about you know the future of mobility and whatever all the stuff um, there is but with us you can really buy it huh? and there's a price tag to it you know like and um, so, <coughs> well, so and that all is because of telematics you know so this is uh, without telematics, this would have not been possible. So, so uh, speaking of price tags, I mean, with that, you know, it was reported that you, you know, you're making uh, after your sale of the back to BMW of the the your share, you've now were investing 100 million euros in this. I mean, it doesn't come cheaply, right? The, yeah. There's all of this, you know, solution comes with a big price tag. Yeah. Do you feel that customers will pay for the value? I mean, because again, it, you're not, you, none of this is on the cheap. This is big long-term investments that have to be made. Well, unfortunately, not all customers pay for it because then uh, everybody in the room would be my customer. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so I think that's uh, obviously that's a delicate uh, topic, um, but uh, we have a very different strategy, I think, to most of our competitors here um, that um, we think very long-term. You know, we are a family business. Huh? So we don't think in the next quarter and reporting to the next uh, stock market. Uh, our company um, has a clear vision where we want to stand in 10, 15, or even sometimes 20 years. So we, took, um, we take most of our proceeds that we have or from our earnings or from interesting transactions like the drive now right. and reinvest it in our company. Right. So um, as you mentioned, just, we just invested more than 100 million <coughs> euros um, cash investment uh, into our new software platform. And um, you cannot do stuff like that and you know, bring out these great new products uh, if you are a low-cost brand. And if you are just focused on you know, participating in e-auctions and being the cheapest and say you know, it's just a renter car and don't focus on the end-to-end -end process or mobility solutions, if I would focus only on being the cheapest, I would never be able to invest uh, right. into the future. Right. So I think that's a, a, a very important difference uh, in our company. So let's talk a little bit about the family part of the company. I mean, you know, certainly, uh, I I you know, your parents are, are legends, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so for you and your brother, uh, you're both uh, in the family business. That's not, you know, always the case, right? Uh, depending, on, you know, family businesses have their own challenges in terms of succession and planning, and even the fact that both of you are even interested in being part of the family business. So how did that come about? Were you guys, did, did you both uh, in the playpen like play with only with cars and decide that you know this was going to be your future or what, what, what how did this all yeah you know? that's a secret trick and I have a one year <laughs> I have a one year old right now and he just plays with cars you know if you want him to be a currently guy play well, I think everybody plays uh, with cars 
uh, listen, you know, like, um, you know, my brother and me, like, we usually don't, uh, for us, we don't run our company like a typical family business. Okay. Um, because I think, you know, like, if you um, run it in a way like many Germ German traditional company family business run their business, they put the family in, in the center of everything. And I think that doesn't show respect to the employees because at the end of the day, the success of our company or success of every company, it's very rarely only the leaders, you know. Right. It's a massive organization with thousands of people, uh, uh, the headquarters and, you know, all around the world renting cars. And I think they make the difference at the end of the day. And if you always talk about the family and, you know, what, like you, you put yourself too much, I think, in the middle. And I think you have to take yourself back and put your, put your team uh, in the center. Right. Um, but the biggest uh, difference uh, that uh, we have learned, you know, like, look, I'm, a, um, I'm turning um, 36 uh, on Saturday. And uh, I'm, uh, um, if you bizarrely, I think I'm the guy in the industry uh, with the uh, largest experience here in the room. <laughs> see what I mean? Right. So right. I think that's a big difference that right. we have, you know, like uh, that our people and myself, you know, we don't think about doing running a job for the next couple of years. Uh, we teach that. I was taught that by my parents and we try to teach that to our uh, key staff, senior executives, people that we are on a very, very long journey together. Right. And we want to climb a huge mountain together. And for this, you need people and team who just don't do a job and stay with you for two years and leave. Uh, who stay with you um, for 10, 15 years and try to build up something um, really big. Right. And this is only, I think, possible if you are a company that is not there, uh, that is a trading good, you know? Most companies, you know, like many, many companies are trading goods, you know, owned by private equity companies right. Or stuff right. who are there to be sold and resold and stuff. Uh, you know, I don't want to say that this is a bad thing, obviously, that there's great companies coming out of that, but it's just a completely different concept of uh, running a business. Huh? Well, and a bit of tra staying true to yourself, right, of who you are and who you aren't, uh, back yeah. to the value proposition and, and your brand. I mean, well, certainly one of the things that you're known for uh, is, you know, the, your, is your strong brand. I mean, there's no, you know, part of the company that you touch that you don't, you know, see the colors, feel the design, feel the, the, the what goes into all yeah. of it. Um, you know, is that, it, do you see that continuing? Is that part of the formula? Do you talk about brand? Do you talk about that as part? You well, know? we, you know, like we talk a lot about our brand, but uh, very often we hear that, but we also, and not cynically, I think our competitors are also great brands. If you look at uh, all those brands around there, um, we as an industry, right. uh, it's a very cold uh, uh, winter out there, you know? It's a tough competition. Huh? Right. And uh, I think uh, we all do a great job and uh, I respect, um, you know, look at, uh, uh, you know, the huge American companies, uh, what kind of mega brands uh, there are uh, and compared to the brand value of them, six is still very small. Right. Look, where are you coming from? If you go to the United States and ask the people, uh, do you know six, huh? Uh, you know, the probability that they know us is very low. Right. And um, so, uh, we have to be very humble, our organization, and understand that the world is still huge in front of us, and uh, Six is uh, not the, you know, the unbeatable brand out there. Uh, we consider ourselves as the David and not the Goliath. Huh? Well, so uh, in, in that, you, know, you, you mentioned the U.S. Um, how important is the expansion in the U.S. to your company? Is that a, a big part of your strategy? Well, listen, you know, the U.S. is by far the biggest uh, um, a market, current market, right. a mobility market in the world, huh? right. uh, that is uh, uncomparable to what happens here uh, in, in Germany or in, in continental Europe. Uh, take alone the airport of Orlando. Um, if you take the amount of cars or the market there, and uh, uh, the size is like Austria and Germany together. Right. Current market, just to get a feeling of that. Huh? Right, just that and one, the market of just the Orlando market. <coughs> and yeah. if you take yep. Orlando, Los Angeles, Chicago together, and maybe Atlanta, it gives you four airports in the U.S., uh, the market is a lot bigger than the whole German car rental market. Right. So you see already the, the size and the scale is yep. unbelievable uh, over there. Uh, the U.S. is already our second country. So in terms of revenue, it's Germany, um, then the U.S. and then France. So you see already how that uh, evolves. And uh, we truly believe that if we meet again in a couple of years, um, the probability is pretty high. Uh, if everything goes well, I hope so, right. uh, that uh, <laughs> um, the U.S. will be our number one country. So we will be 
more and more become from a small German car rental company in Pullach, Germany, um, to a um, global uh, provider uh, of mobility, thanks to the US. Right, wow. Um, but it's a tough world over there, I can tell you. Huh? Well, yeah, very so competitive. Well, right, <laughs> very competitive. Uh, and to your point about brand, and, and uh, in a high, it's a highly competitive and with some very entrenched brands that you're oh, going yeah. up against, right? And they know what they're doing back there. So yeah. it's a different, also our, our friends, you know, from the competition, um, the way they run their companies is different than they run it here because it's the whole market, you know. Right. Uh, there's different people running it, huh? And uh, it's very, very competitive, huh? Right. But efficient. Right. And it's a different business model also over there. Everything is, the whole business model of renting cars is just a different business model uh, than what uh, in you Germany see here. Yeah. So you cannot take the American model, bring it to Germany, or bring the German model to the US. It's just you have to reinvent yourself. So, um, Bringing it back to the buyers, um, and uh, you know, you've got uh, you know hundreds of buyers here at the show, um, at our conference here, and they, you know, they're faced with all of this, you know, all these questions and uh, challenges about mobility and what technology should I use, what I shouldn't, what I should adopt, what I shouldn't. Um, advice for them about uh, you know what they should, how they should focus, what they should do. Um, aside from, you know, yeah, renting with work six, with you six, know? I, yeah. I, I, I knew that was coming. <laughs> but, but just generally, if you're, if you're, take the, if you were in their shoes, yeah. what would you be doing right now? What would be your priorities? Well, I, sometimes uh, I'm also in their shoes because we are also a customer of travel products in our company. Right. And um, I would be a bit confused, if I'm very honest. Uh, you know, like running around, there are so many new buzzwords and, and solutions and right, technologies right. and uh, so much stuff. And if you look back, your show, I mean, I had the pleasure of visiting your show, I think, I don't know, for the last 10 years, maybe. Right, right. Um, if you look it back, you know, every year the world is completely different. So much stuff is changing and it's so fast. You At know? the pace of change. And yeah. the stuff I'm sure yep. that we talk about this show uh, here, if we meet next year in Munich, um, lots of that stuff we say, oh, old crap, you know, like, this, uh, no. so um, I would be confused, huh? And um, because there is so many also startups and that tell you, you know, we're going to change everything and all the old stuff is bad and a rental car is dead and, you know, all that kind right, of stuff, you right. know. Um, my advice would be to just relax a bit, you know. Um, to, you know what I mean? <laughs> if you ask me for, because right. I always feel everything is always too much, you know, change. Right. Just relax, you know, and um, choose yourself a provider that you can trust uh, that has uh, in any, I mean, not just car rental, but be it airlines or online booking engines right. or what. I, if you look at your great exposition hall, is focus more on the people that you find somebody who really knows what he does. Right. Because there's, you know, like there's easy to do a PowerPoint presentation and all. I'm a very bad p guy in PowerPoints, <laughs> uh, but it's <clears throat> I think it's easy to right. put it on the desk and tell them you're the great guy and I can do everything, um, but uh, choose somebody who really knows what he's talking about, you know? Right. And then develop trust because I think business at the end of the day is always done between human beings and people and not between machines and not between, you know? It's just so um, this and um, um, this whole end-to-end -end thing is at least that what I feel um, a big game changer where you can really save money. If you look at where you can save money as a travel manager uh, or as a procurement guy in the, in the travel management industry, I think you know you can run the next RFP and you know you can you know try to squeeze and squeeze and squeeze. Sure, there might be something you still gain, but you know this party I think is a little bit over. Right. Because. Right. You know, suppliers cannot give out their stuff for free. Huh? Right. And uh, m maybe some. Um, <laughs> maybe, yeah. And unfortunately, sometimes we all do that, yeah. But uh, including us, just for, you know, but uh, this is not long term. I think the big uh, is uh, where you can change and really gain savings if you um, persuade your boss or your organization um, that you think in end to end and try to put value on each of the little processes that are involved in the. Uh, travel <coughs> process right and uh, and try to put a euro value on if a supplier sends you a wrong bill right with a mistake in it you know right. and then you have to tell him hey it's a wrong bill and he says ah oh, sorry then he sends it again and then you know and all this ping pong stuff you know like all the little little details that there are right you know our company or our industry we can cause a hell lot of costs to your organizations 
that nobody really knows, that nobody quantifies, just because we do a wrong job and I'm including myself. Right, I see that very often. If I visit my clients and I'm and, yeah. inefficient, by inefficiencies right. of our products, I can cause huge costs uh, where a travel manager would never put a value on that. Huh? Right. Um, but at the end of the day, they are so important. Right. Or take the time that you can save for travel managers, uh, for travelers, sorry, uh, if they go and if they don't have to go to a rental car counter anymore, if they check in in the aircraft and they go uh, directly in the airplane, this has value. And it has euro or dollar value. Huh? Absolutely. So, and I think if you try to think end to end and find a great provider that delivers you solutions end to end, um, that is, I think, the next step in generating uh, savings. Well, great feedback. Appreciate your candor and uh, your leadership. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, Constantine Sixth. Thank you. Thank you.